what in the actual f As you probably already know, my other job is as a commissioned terrain artist. And this video covers a build that was passed on to me by a fairly regular client of mine. She's a Little House on the Prairie super fan. And you can't get models of certain buildings that are important in the TV series. Now, are these very important? I don't know. I've never watched the TV series. But people are big fans, and far be it for me to judge. In fact, I'd like to help them. So, I've taken up the torch and have begun building the models for the buildings that generally you can't get kits in. The first one we're going to feature is the Feed and Seed building from Walnut Grove. Sit back and relax and check out how this build progresses. The first thing I did was design a plan. I had several photos and a paper model of the building but that was really all I had to work with. Fortunately, on the paper model, there was a man in one image. Assuming he was six foot tall, I could use him to scale the whole build. All I needed to do was figure out how many lengths of him fit over the whole length, depth, and height of the picture. This would give me the rough dimensions. Once I had figured these out, I converted them to 1 52nd scale. In case you're wondering, 0.23 of an inch makes one foot in this scale. Also, in case you're wondering, I'm in fact Canadian, so then I converted the imperial scale to a metric one. And yes, I never want to see a calculator again. Now I had a way to draw out the plans, so I went and ruled the basic shape onto a sheet of half inch insulation foam. I put it together as two parts, one for the barn and one for the loft. I cut these out with a hot foam cutter. I also drew out the walls onto the sheets of foam core to form flat plates for the walls themselves. I also marked on these the spots where the windows and doors would go. Then taking out a sharp knife, I cut all of this out. Getting out some thin sheets of balsa wood, I cut them to the same dimensions as the corresponding foam core wall sections. When I was satisfied with these, I hot glued them to the front of each of the foam core counterparts. Because the walnut grove feed and seed is a building that's made almost entirely of wood planks, I then used a scribe and scored a uniform wood plank pattern into the balsa. To help accentuate the wood grain, I followed up by dragging the teeth of my razor saw widthwise over each piece of wood. It was now time to add the doors. I built these from balsa using the same technique as the walls, but I also added some brass scale model hinges and door handles made from cut down paper clips. At this point, I now had all the walls ready, sitting as flat plates, waiting to be glued together. But first I turned my attention to the stone foundation. Going to the insulation foam, I scored a rough stone pattern into the surface. I enhanced the stone texture by rolling a ball of tin foil over the top of the foam. Now with hot glue, I could glue the walls to the foundation. Here and there, I added internal supports with foam triangles cut to have a right angle edge facing the wall. I proceeded carefully to keep everything square. With the walls installed, I got out some foam safe spray paint and primed everything black. The roof was next. I cut a thick piece of box board to the shape of the roof. Then I scored the inside of it so it could bend at the peak. With this done, I hot glued it into place. 
Now, I've been building terrain for over 30 years, and a good portion of this has been done in the professional capacity. I've built everything from peaceful green meadows to the war-torn vision of the 41st millennium. But nothing scares me as much as having to make shingles. They just plain suck to build. But in this kind of situation, all you can do is forge ahead. So I started building shingles with the foam method. I drew the shape on a strip of insulation foam, used a hot wire cutter to cut notches into it, then I roughened up the upper surface with a wire brush. Setting my wire cutter to about as thin as I could, I began cutting the strip of foam into layers. I stopped between each layer to roughen up the next layer with my brush. Eventually I had enough strips prepared and I used tacky glue to adhere each strip to the roof. I made sure to overlap each successive layer just slightly. When it was all glued down and dry, I mixed Mod Podge with black acrylic paint and applied it heavily over the foam to lend it all strength. Looking at the photo, you can see the building has a wooden porch, and it also has a balcony accessed by a staircase. For each of these, I built a wood frame from balsa and applied flat sheets scored with plank patterns over the top, similar to what I did with the walls. The stairs were a little more complex, requiring individual steps to be super glued in place and a railing to be added by cutting, you guessed it, lots of more strips of balsa wood. After quite a bit of work and a lot of cuts and glue though, I finally got this section finished and I hot glued it all to the exterior of the existing structure. This portion capped off the construction, so I gave it all another coat of spray primer, and when this had dried, I moved on to painting. I got out my airbrush and applied hull red to the doors and shingles. I wanted everything to look worn, so I used an uneven coat, spraying it in cloudy patterns. For the wood planks, I had the same classic problem all painters seem to experience with worn and weathered wood. That is, the color is just really hard to place. Most wood is not really brown, especially when it's been exposed to the elements, but it's not really gray either. To make things more difficult, subtle variation often exists between the color tones in boards. Fortunately, over the years, I've come up with a method that I think works pretty well. I start by applying another uneven, cloudy layer to the wood using my airbrush filled with the Vallejo Model Air Color U.S. Sand. While I wait for the U.S. Sand to dry, I go back to the roof. I apply a mix of 50-50 deck tan and hull red over the whole thing, which I apply by a light dry brush. Turning back to the walls, I give them a dry brush with deck tan. Then getting out a fine brush and using silver gray, I add a highlight to the hard edges where the sun would hit the wood directly. This shows up in places like the edges of the door frames and around the edges of the porch. At this point you'll likely notice that the background in the video changes. This is because I went to the cottage. Don't think this means that I sat on my butt though. In order to stay productive as a model builder, I work to a schedule. So I just kept on painting despite the new surroundings. Remember how I said wood planks have subtle color differences? Well, it's time to add those. We can also cover whatever wear and tear the building should have at the same time. To do this, I turn to my favorite tool, weathering pencils. Getting out a series of earth and rust tones, I apply the pencils wet 
in random patches on the boards. When this is done, I take out a moist brush and blend the colors into the surface of the wood. I also work some green weathering pencils into the wood to imply moss. Things are now looking pretty good. But the amount of dry brushing, as always, has obscured some detail. So getting out some panel liner, I carefully go in and paint the areas between the boards where shadows would appear. This is a painstaking process, but it really does do wonders to add a sense of mass and volume back to the model. Now I was down to the finishing touches. There are some signs on the walnut grove feed and seed, so I paint those on by hand. Then I go ahead and add the business signage. Finally, since the business sells seeds, I add a few bags of them on the front porch. With the majority of the work now complete, all that remains is to add a few coats of matte varnish to protect the work. And with that, this project is done. Pa can take the wagon over to the store and pick up his supplies so he can get to planting. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for miniature, terrain building, and diorama content. And we can't do it without your support. We want to build a community to ensure that the wonderful art of building a miniature is accessible to everybody. To participate, please consider joining on Patreon. For $4 a month, our Patreon members benefit from 10% off at Joe Saunders Terrain in the Etsy store, 5% off paints and hobby supplies at Torchlight Games, free access to STL files, a mention in our credits, and early access to our videos. Please check it out and consider joining. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember to subscribe, press the bell button so you get immediate notification on our videos, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.